Hello, this is Team Astro for the Build a CubeSat Challenge 2024. I'm Xander, the software and mechanical manager. I'm Thor Kronkowski, a junior developer. I'm Garrison Winters, senior developer. And this is our presentation. Our mission is, uh, is to track and scan known wildfires to see how they grow in the forest, be able to alert um, ground forces like firefighters of where it's spreading faster and where resources need to be divided, um, etc. And we do that by scanning the ground with our satellite for colors like red and then like, um, or like gray, smoke, fire, etc. Um, and then we can use that to calculate where it's spreading, how fast it's spreading, etc. Um, and we do that with, well, uh, the camera. Um, we have three states, passive, active, then transmission. When it's in passive, that's when it's no sunlight. Um, there's no pictures being taken. It doesn't need to transmit anything. It's just listening to see it for commands. Um, if it's in its active state, it's in sunlight and it's actively taking pictures of a fire. It might be transmitting some data, but not a ton. And then transmission is when it's in sunlight, charging up, um, and we want to transmit those pictures back to the ground station for further processing and for we can inform ground forces what the status of the fire is. So for scaling to an actual flight spacecraft, what we'd want to first do is have a thermal regulation system. That way when you were in space, where there's huge differentials between the shadow and in sunlight, we won't be limited by the, the, the change in the thermal energy that's putting, being put into the system from the bright sun. Um, we want to make sure that not just the energy from the sun, but also the energy from the components themselves aren't going to cause any problems with the, the mission. Um, we would use like thermal paste, um, radiators, heaters, things that'll try and keep the temperature within a, a certain range that'll be operable for the mission. We want to have a reduced number of extra parts and loose parts like the screws, the, the, the elbow pieces, and um, pieces that could be actually uh, joined with other pieces and uh, make a stronger piece and a lighter piece. That way we won't have to worry about um, points, more points of failure. And um, especially because during the, the launch, if uh, a screw comes loose from all the vibration, that's going to be a problem for the rest of the mission. And we don't want to worry about that. So we're going to try to minimize um, those kinds of problems. Um, so another thing with the actual frame is that it's, it's not made out of the most high quality aluminum as of right now. So we'd want to upgrade it to something like a uh, 6061 or a 7075 aluminum. To, uh, it's what's actually used right now for, um, for actual hardware grade um, materials that will actually be in tough environments that it can take a much, much more intense heat range and when we're in space and we're in these changing environments, um, we don't want our uh, main panels to be expanding and contracting extreme amounts or to be getting um, malleable, which that these would be really big problems. So we want to make sure we're using a, a much higher quality aluminum frame and not just the, the rails. Um, this could be part of the thermal system we could have maybe not fully enclosed, but partially enclosed um, side panels too to help um, with the heat dispersion. We could also what we also want to do is work on the wire management. Right now, the way that our wires are connected for the most part is with uh, just plugging wires in together. What we want to do is to solder the wires together. Um, so that again, you know, there's no vibrations that can make them come loose. Uh, if it, like part of the of the connection breaks, now the whole thing won't be broken. So we want to actually solder the wires together, and we want to you know tuck the wires in together, manage the wires closely together, so that they're not all loose, they're not all floating around, and these be just more 
problems that could cause mission failures that we want to try and get rid of. Um, another big uh, limitation that we have with our current CubeSat is the solar panels. Um, right now, the solar panel isn't as efficient as many current solar panels are that are actually being used in space. So we want to have a better transmission ratio for the solar panel. That way we're getting the most energy for the surface area. And on the surface area, we would also want to increase the amount of solar panel surface area that we're using. Because right now we're only using one of the six sides of the solar I mean, of the CubeSat for so, for the solar panel. We want to try and um, have more sides that have solar panels or increase the amount of the side that has a solar panel. So that way when we're um, in our transmission phase, for example, and we're just charging up while we're uh, having data go down, we want to have uh, as much energy coming in for as little amount of time so that way we can be back into our operation mode as soon as possible in case uh, a fire comes up. Um, we also want to uh, explore the possibilities of expanding solar panels. So solar panels that will fit into the 1U CubeSat size, but once in space expand out to a larger size, that way again we get um, more energy for less amount of time and size and mass. Um, for our actual tracking, we want to keep the IMU short-term calculations, but we also want to include uh, a, we also want to include a, a GPS system that will um, use satellites that are at a higher altitude and uh, a higher orbit and look back down at our satellite and get um, not just data relative to itself, but data relative to the Earth and relative to just the, the, whole, the whole galaxy. So we want to make sure that we can track it from anywhere, not just know which direction it's facing. Um, and on top of which direction it's facing, we want to have an attitude control system so that when, for example, the CubeSat's deployed, there is a slight spin on it. We want to be able to control the spin. That way, uh, we can know, we can have our camera facing the Earth's surface and facing the the, the place where the the fire is, for example, or the the natural disaster is. And so, <coughs> we want to make sure that we're not going in circles, spinning out of control, but we actually have control of the spacecraft. We could use magnet torquers, for example. Um, and um, in order to control this, we're thinking about going away from Bluetooth and switching more to a longer range radio. That way, we could still have the uh, upload and downlink uh, data from and to the, the spacecraft but there's already a lot more infrastructure for radio and less so for specifically Bluetooth. And I think it'd be a lot easier to piggyback off of what's already there than to build this um, new infrastructure with Bluetooth, which seems a little bit more limiting than radio and it's less forgiving than what radio would be. So these are some of the things we'd like to consider for scaling up the CubeSat to an actual, uh, an actual spacecraft. So we learned a lot of lessons while working on this project. Uh, one of them was the battery, right? So we're trying to fit this this battery case into the um, small structure, but it wouldn't fit. If we attached cables to it, It we wouldn't be able to reroute the cables back into the Pi and power the Pi. So what we ended up doing was removing the, removing the battery from the case and uh, putting it in that way. We did this as safely as we could, and it did end up working. It's just really annoying to turn off, but it would be annoying either way. Uh, we learned about Python modules um, and how they're, how some of them only work with certain OS versions. So when I, uh, when I was working on developing the program for this for Bluetooth, uh, I was trying to use the Python, mo or Python library uh, PyBlues, and it only works with Linux. I uh, tried using like virtual Linux machines and stuff, but even those wouldn't work with the 
with the um Pyth with the Python library. So I had to end up uh, pulling out a old Ubuntu computer in order to fix that problem. This took a very long to figure a very long time to figure out, and was very very complex for our situation. We weren't very sure on how to how to tackle that. We learned as uh, we learned about not procrastinating and uh, working as a team. Uh, for example, when we were taking the team photo, we didn't understand that it, the uh, pie needed to be sh shooken to take the picture for that team photo. So we had to uh, race race to get that working so that we could take that team photo. And we uh, we saw that if <laughs> if you over tighten screws in a acrylic, it shatters the acrylic. Um, luckily, they, you guys did provide backups, so we were able to fix that. And the, there's some panels that could be slightly cracked and still work in there. So, yeah, next time we'd probably want to run this off of a uh, less powerful computer. Uh, so then the battery doesn't die and we don't need such a big battery, right? So that could fit in the uh, case. And we'd also want to use, um, we'd probably want to use Rust instead of Python or some lower level language just so it doesn't eat up battery life and uh, lets us keep the battery smaller and also doesn't run into as many uh, library errors because we would be making our uh, own libraries and stuff for the computer. Uh, yeah, so uh, so one of the videos is showing is showing the uh, passive state. It should be the video showing a whole bunch of numbers going down. And that is that is um, basically the information that the Pi is going through. And when it sends an image, that is when it's like triggered and going into its active state, and it sends it down to the uh, to the ground station. The ground station's always in a uh, receiving state. It doesn't need to worry about power or anything. So the one showing the data, and it's also calculating the uh, time that is needed to the time that the fire, or in our case, red's gonna take over the screen, right? So that's in uh, seconds. So the so the CubeSat is always recording the location in in passive mode just so it when, knows when to switch into active mode and send a uh, picture to the ground server the uh, ground station is always listening for incoming messages from the small set and can send messages to the small set in this case it is also uh, calculating uh, time time until the entire screen is taken over by red so it's doing that with a uh, rate of change and a uh, number of red on the screen so here you uh, see the video of the of the small sat taking pictures of a ping pong paddle, and as the uh, as as the um, demonstrator slides oh. the uh, black paddle off more, more of it becomes red, and uh, you should be able to see in the side video that happening, and it tells you how much longer it's going to take. As you can see, when we're trying to launch our actual CubeSat to space, we would also need to account for the vibrations and forces from the rocket launch itself. Not only the variables that play during the, uh, the mission when it's in orbit. In order to do this, we want to make sure the structure is very stable and all the components are very tightly attached and the temperature during the rocket launch is adequate for the mission. Now, for something like this, for example, launching from Cape Canaveral, Florida on the Space Coast, we would want to uh, make sure we have a close integration team to make sure that each part of the CubeSat isn't overlooked when it's being integrated with the actual launch vehicle. That way we can eliminate as many possible places for failure. Um, so our program works and we are able to also use it for other colors. So like if we want to test for a oil spill, we could do black on blue, calculate how much black is on blue, and things like that, right? So it worked pretty well. We wish that we were able to get the um, IMU more calibrated, but then again, it'll never be as accurate as a GPS. So that is pretty important part to scaling up, is using a GPS. This has been Team Astro. Thank you for viewing our final presentation.